people hey guys this is birdman 316 here we're going to do a quick tabletop not a review but a let me show you this stuff came this is the epiphone stuff let's see at the top wrong way here there we go there we go the Epiphone tailstop piece. The Epiphone bridge. Here we go. Let's get in close to where we can see it. There we go. Hopefully we can see that. And here are the thumb wheels and the studs. And here are the studs and the screws that go in the very back for the tailstop piece. Now this right here is the main reason I got the whole kit. Let me, let me get this thing apart and I'll show you guys something. Now, this guitar here does not have the thumb wheels on it. And that kind of bothered me because I wanted it to be looking more authentic. Let's get this out of here right quick here so you guys can get a better idea of what I'm talking about. All right, here we go. This right here has the screw top, has a slot in the top, and the thumb wheel that you can raise and lower this bridge on a Les Paul style guitar. Now I'm hoping, pretty tight there, that it goes in like that when the bridge goes on top of there and you can either adjust it with this screw top here or you can turn this the thumb wheel and it raises and lowers the bridge however you want your action and stuff so i'm hoping that this these threads hopefully i'm hoping that they are the same focus there we go as the threads on the guitar itself that had the, the studs in the guitar itself I'm hoping they're the same size so it would be an easy simple swap I'm pretty sure that those are metric as well as the Chibson Les Paul the one I call the new greenie it's laying right here on the table you can't really see it unless I do this there we go there it is and you can tell that bridge does not have the thumb wheels on it. I did take measurements right there where the bridge is, where the thumb wheels would be, and the bottom where the stud is, and I wrote those down, so hopefully I can get those matched back up when I put it all back together. Now when I get this thing apart, I'm just going to take the strings and loosen them all the way up, and then take the stop bar piece and just move it to the side, lift the bridge off and replace those little adjuster thingies with the proper thumb wheel adjusters and use my caliper here this caliper right here to measure and get it as close as possible that it is now so that way the action will be the same the action is fine how it is and i would like to get it back to where it is now but with proper thumb wheels with that said guys i will be back shortly with a another little tabletop type deal so there you go guys i will be right back check three four check one five. Oh, hey guys birdman 316 here we go we are back again we did the swaparoni and we got lucky this is what came off of there where are you? There you are. Look at that. No thumb wheel at all. But there's nothing wrong with this. It does work. But I guess I'm just weird like that. And here's what it looks like. This is the Epiphone bridge. Fits perfectly. See, there's proof Epiphone bridge. There we go. I'll be saving this bridge for something in the future. And these are the factory studs that came with the Epiphone bridge 
I decided to leave the studs that were already in the guitar in the guitar. And take you over here and show you this. You can tell. There are the spun wheels there. You see them? There we go. See the little ridges on them. There you go. And there's a little tiny little string is not touching the back of the bridge, which is good. Now this guitar here is that one I did the sound check on. Now these gold strap buttons were not on here from the factory. The factory ones were fendery looking strap buttons. There's nothing wrong with fender, but I don't like fender stuff on a Gibson style guitar. You notice I said Gibson style, because this is not the real thing. The, some people, the purists, will call them fakes, phonies. Some people even go as far as calling them garbage. But there's nothing garbage about this one. You can tell it's got that. Another name over top of the other name. They even got the fake Grovers on here. Let me show you. Got the fake Grovers on here. There we go. No. Well, sort of in a way, yes. Yes, the fake Grovers, but they seem really nice. Seems like it holds the tune good. Now these are factory strings. Normally I'll be swapping these out, but I am out of the Ernie Ball green slinky 10x46s, so we're just going to have to live with these a little bit longer. And you notice the pickups. You notice how sunk that base side of the neck pickup is very similar to how Peter Green had his and the bridge is not quite as sunk but it is just about flush with this ring you notice the screws are different now those are the screws that came with the guitar originally as far as like the pickup adjustment screw now here is what came with the Vanson pickups. These are Vanson pickups from the UK. These original Vanson pickup screws are a little bit shorter than those, but I didn't want to go all back in there and tear it all apart and change them. I figured, well, being that the original Greenie had a repair done to the pickup, because for some reason I don't know what happened, what Peter did, but he originally took the neck pickup out back when he was, I think, in the... Oh, what's the name of that band? Oh, it's before you formed Fleetwood Mac. I'll, I'll think of it. Blues Breakers, there we go. I think he was chasing the Eric Clapton tone and just had the bridge pickup in there. He took the neck pickup out and later decided to put the neck pickup back, but something happened and it broke. So he took it to a local shop and had it rewound, and that's when it got accidentally put in upside down and something happened in the structure maybe they put the magnet in backwards or something accidentally put a different uh, different kind of uh, cable on it or whatever like that no one really really truly knows but the rest is tonal history so i figured well peter's was a little bit different so hey might as well have this a little bit different too right this is probably what his might have looked like when it was new. When Peter Green had his at all, it had all amber knobs on here. When Gary Moore got it, he put the gold with the silver inserts, I'm guessing for uh, ease of um, access for dark stage lighting, whatever like that, I'm not sure. But anyway, I will post the measurements and the profiles shortly after this film. Now, I would have taken the stale tail stop piece totally off but I was able to raise it up and slide this bridge very carefully under it and change the posts to thumb wheels right and put the bridge back and I'm still in the process of tweaking and make sure it's tuned and there's no buzzing going on and yet have nice little action but uh, sorry, sadly, I don't have a 1st fret or 12th fret neck depth to give you. 
I'm guessing this is very early 60s profile because it's not a huge baseball bat neck like in the late 50s of this pulls. So there you go guys. Let's slide out here to get a nice thumbnail. There we go. Thumbnail time. If you want a thumbnail of a sweet fake list Paul, there you go, guys. Guys, this is Birdman316. I want everyone to have a wonderful day, wonderful night, wherever you are. And always remember, there we go, the rock out. Rock it out. Keep rocking. Make the world a better place, guys. This is Birdman316. Sayonara.